do, 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 do. Baby shark, do, 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 do. You're gonna have Baby you're gonna, shark. You're gonna be stuck with this. It. Korean. Welcome to Unpacked, a series where we break down the big stuff that's been living in your head rent free. And we make it more manageable. Hi, it's Hussein. And I'm Tom. And today we're unpacking Blackpink. How have they dominated the Western charts? What have fans had to do with the level of success? And will they break the seven year curse? We'll find out. We'll find out. What's in the box, Hussein? What's in the box? We'll what is in the out. box? But in order for us to celebrate Blackpink, turning seven, we've got a little candle. And we got a cake as well. Happy birthday. <laughs> Get that on. What does the seven mean, Hussein? What does the seven mean, Tom? <laughs> Blackpink is made up of four different members, which yeah. is Jenny, Lisa, Jisoo, and Rose. They all have their own kind of personal little relevance in terms of the group. So let's start off with Lisa. Lisa's actually Thai. So when she auditioned, she actually auditioned from Thailand. But then she moved over and she learned the whole Korean culture. She learned the Korean language. Uh, but she is, let's say, the rapper and also the lead dancer of the group. Jisoo is the visual. Do you know what visual is? Yeah. What is it? The dancer. Visual. The visual, the dancer. No. The main one. No. I don't know. So any K-pop group uh, will have the visual, which is the face of the group. Somebody who is considered right. to be the prettiest or the front-facing image of the entire group. Jenny is a vocalist and a rapper, and Rosé is the main vocalist, I would say. Yeah. All of them are pretty equal in terms of talent. Like, they utilize themselves really, really well. Yeah. They have their dances on lock. They have their rap, their sing. They do it all. And they're not bilingual. Trilingual? Trilingual? Polyglots. How many languages is that? Polyglots three or more. Like, they weren't messing about in terms of how they want to be presenting themselves. They yeah. actually became the first K-pop group to uh, earn an MTV Music Video Award. They've had new heights in terms of the amount of views that they have on their videos on YouTube. They've also headlined in Coachella, which has been the first K-pop girl group. And the UK festival as well. Yes, in Hyde Park. Yeah, so they were, well. they were kicking around. So there. when they were individual, were they individual artists before they came together as a group? No, no, they weren't. Again, they were only like 14, 15 when they started. Okay, they were young, young. They auditioned, they got in, and, and then from then on, they were trained by the company to go you know, to build themselves up as an artist. So they weren't technically a defined artist. They just had the talent. Some big achievements in seven years. And I want to dive into why why this happened. I want to talk about a bit about the Korean wave and how Korean culture has really like, changed the industry in the last 10 years, especially. What's in the box, Tom? The box. What is in the box What's for the next the section? We have got a Psy mask. This I could do with the string. Where should we put it? Such a good appear factor. She's there. Such a good scary. Okay. So what does Psy represent? I think is the face of the Korean wave and that's something that I want to talk about. For those who don't know, it's a term that is used to refer the phenomenal growth of Korean culture. So true. And I want to start with one of my Tomo timelines, my famous Tomo timeline, back timeline. <laughs> back with the mid late 1990s where I feel like the Korean culture started to grow. This is where we saw a lot of K-dramas, K-pop and things like that start to rise. But I really feel like it didn't click on. Maybe social media wasn't around, that's maybe why it didn't click on. And I feel like the lack of, yeah, the lack of development technology is maybe why the Korean culture didn't really properly grow until 2000, 2010, where I think we saw the rise of BTS and Psy. Personally for me, this is where I first heard of the Korean culture, Gangnam Style through music, it was massive, and Psy is still selling out shows in 2023. Massive really? stadiums, yeah, which is absolutely I think ridiculous. I kind of fell off a little bit. No, I saw a video recently. One hit wonder? No, he's still going, like, strong. Like, I saw a massive crowd, massive stadium. Psy? Yeah, Psy. Like, today? Today, now. 2023, yeah. It's Thomas? insane. And Girls' Generation. Well, I'm going to say And Girls' Generation. It. Let me just put a little anecdote while I'm here, because, you know, I'm a man of culture, a man of learning. The design, no, the v &A actually did an exhibition the Korean wave. The Korean wave is also known as Hallyu, which is the Korean wave. It started off in kind of late 1990s, in the yeah. 90s, uh, mid to late, and that kind of popped off. But for us, and I feel like in our generation, because, mm. you know, young and youthful, it wasn't until Psy really popped off that we really knew about it. Yeah. So I like to refer to Psy and Girls Generation and, and BTS, Big Bang. I'd say as well. BTS is, I feel like that's, you know, third paragraph. I would like to refer yeah. to them as the introductory paragraph of Korean culture, because when he popped off, everyone was like, who's this? Oh. I remember, be, I remember being in like, I think year five, just God forbid. doing a bit of Gangnam Style. 
I remember we that so We would not be friends. Well. We would not be friends. No, it was a massive, massive, massive thing. Big. Fast forward to how it is now. We've seen Squid Game. We've seen Parasite, which got four awards, I believe. Four awards. It was nominated for six. In Absolutely insane. It's both up. But in terms of the Korean culture, it really started off with K-pop music and the K-dramas. Yes. How they package it, how they curate it, how they put it all together. Psy was just pretty much a doorway to be like, hey, look what we're doing over there. And the rest of the world was watching. For music, for sure. Yes. They were like, there's a party in the end and we want to join. And we can definitely see the fact that the K-pop industry have done so, so well for the country because the South Korea music industry in 2021, if I'm not mistaken, actually raked in um, an all-time high profits of 9.4 trillion won trillion Ooh, and if ridiculous. you convert that to british pounds it would be about five trillion and i think that's mad and insane it's nice to see what the asian side of the world the eastern side mm. of the world can do because i feel like prior to all of this the western side of the world really dominated a lot of our conversation yeah for sure but how have they done this i'm how interested to talk about how they've done this we'll saying. look into the idol system do, 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 baby shark do, 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 do. you're gonna have baby you're gonna, shark you're gonna be stuck with this it korean Oh my God, Baby Shark Dance was brought into public consciousness in 2015 by South Korea. South Korea, do you see that? I'm gonna add my remix to it. Subscribe to subscribe to Yeah, keep going. Subscribe to subscribe. Now, that was good. Are you done? I hope you all get in the comments and berate him. I hope you all are seeing this. Purely for that singing. Yeah, now. Oh, I just cringe badly then. Imagine if we were, I was seeing this video, dislike. We said self-hatred. I'm so, here, I'm so here for this. What are we chatting about? In order for their Blackpink to, the Blackpink members to be where they are, they have to go through a quite a rigorous process. In order to represent that, we gotta go in the box. We gotta go in the box. In order to represent that, we have the Blackpink CD to represent the content system and the idol system, which is honestly my favorite little part. So let me just get... Comfy. Really comfy. <laughs> Let me just get comfy a little bit. They were auditioning from. Can I stop He's you got there? Questions. He's got questions. So when you say audition, where what are they auditioning for? Where is it like some X Factor type of thing? It isn't because there's no audience for this. So companies right. like SM, um, YG Entertainment, which is actually the one who handles and deals with Blackpink, they are the companies who pretty much put out casting calls. You know, they find people and they say, regardless of your age, regardless of your background, gender, ethnicity, apply and audition if you want to. You can do online ones now. I think it's like post pandemic. There's been a lot of online ones, but before that, people will actually like they will go to these countries, yeah, to various different countries and actually set up auditions. That's what Lisa did. And if they said yes and it's approved, they're moving over. So they popped over to South Korea. They go and work. And pretty much some of them live in the dorms as well. And it becomes a little bit like a boarding school. For an singers. Artist. Not just for singers. I mean, look at any K-pop group. They sing, they dance, they do yeah, the works, you know. Do, Walks to describe this entire system as Disney kids. I mean, if you look at Miley Cyrus, Selena Gomez, you know, Disney kids, they start off really, really young. You know, they walk into the industry, but then they know how to sing, they know how to act, they know how to dance. And from that, they perfect those things until they become proper actors. And that's how they pop off as artists. That is what the Korean music industry is doing now. They've actually cracked the code of how to build these artists and then turned them into, you know, a multimillionaire, um, most awesome. iconic artist in the world. They will train 14 hours a day and they will actually be on this constant schedule of dancing, choreography, singing, learning. But they don't do just that. They still have schooling on the side. They had to learn um, foreign languages because, you know, as artists, they want to be international. The percentage of being a trainee idol is, if I'm not mistaken, 0.01%. Wow. Yeah. So it is it's a brutal, brutal industry. So did these individual girls come in mm -hmm. and basically you're saying they got put together as four solo talents and made into a big girl band? Yes. Yes, to say the least. I know this is a bit of a lengthy story, but... It's like oh, One Direction, yeah. though, yeah? It is, kind yeah. Kind of like One Direction. Very much so. It, I mean, the Western the... world there, y'all are hard of vast. You know what I mean? One Direction, Fifth Harmony. Yeah. Simon Cowell said, y'all will work well together. And the next thing they you know... were like... Yeah, but One Direction popped off. Similar to this case. Once they're in, and then they keep training and stuff like that, they have to audition again and again and again with the company in order for them to be either kept or removed. I'm really interested when you say that these Korean artists and bands, they debut and then that's it, explodes. I want to talk a bit about how that happens and thanks to fans and Experience. people who have absolutely fallen in love with the Korean culture and Blackpink. Why have Blackpink got so big worldwide? 
In my opinion, it's all about the stands and the fans of Blackpink and Korean culture in it alone. I think it's really interesting to dive into why and how. I mean, let me give you some statistics. Their music video, um, da 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 da, on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. 2.1 billion views on YouTube, and it was released in 2018, which is, like they were the first K-pop band to do that. 2.1 billion views. That's like a third? No. How many people there are? Eight? No. Because I see somebody do this math. A quarter. <laughs> That's a quarter of the world. A quarter of the world, 2.1 billion people. A quarter people. of the world. And it's interesting to know their biggest fans are from the United States, Period. Indonesia, Period. Thailand. And to put things into perspective, they got 830 total million views in India alone. They're literally unstoppable. But anyway, yeah, talking about the stands and the fans is something that I want to do. The blinks, as we know, as blinks. everybody knows, are worldwide. I think the best way to put it is it's like the Taylor Swift of the UK, in my opinion. Like, those fans for Taylor Swift are fans, like stands. <laughs> These fans are You put your thing. back into that word. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> <laughs> they are stands. These people will attend concerts, merch stuff, anything that they release, even if they don't say nothing. Even if it's just an upload. Right. And it's interesting to see the, one of their biggest fan bases in, is in the United States. I mean, if you compare it to public population size to ratio, then it does make sense. But let's also be real in terms of the fact that there's a lot of Asian people that's moved across the world from globalization anyway. So it, it's not super shocking that there are a lot of people that's nodding themselves towards mm. South Korea as an Asian representation overall and generally. But I mean, they've got like a really good parasocial relationship with them. Really debatable. No, really? I mean, I don't Why? know what you're going to say. Well, I was going to say their para parasocial relationship comes from the fact that I think their lyrics, their songs are very, very powerful. And a lot of people can connect with them through that. Mm -hmm. it's very, it is mm -hmm. obviously one sided, but like their fans are very connected to what they produce and the content they produce. Because Blackpink is nonstop. They really know how to utilize social media in order for, the, for them to continue to get themselves out there like they're constantly, constantly. on the move Ooh, you know I, it's unavoidable in terms of the amount of content that's coming mm. over to blinks's way that's all weird the amount of content they produce it goes a long way this is why i think a lot of people do connect with them taylor swift might be a good example for the western world she doesn't stop you know what i mean she's yeah. constantly adding dates here's a new album here's this here's that you know she's showing up in her stopper she's showing up in uh, the summer i turned pretty she has not stopped is this sustainable can they keep this going for a long long time whether it's sustainable or not this is what they gotta do i don't know how well it keeps up in terms of their physical and mental health which is usually the underbelly of the k-pop music industry that not a lot of people a want yeah. to talk about or b want to actually open up because there's a lot of things in the background that isn't too pretty away from the flashing lights and the fun dances they might just need to stop after a cute little seven years. So K-pop members and K-pop idols, they have to go through this, this cute little convention, this cute little idea of the seven year curse. It's giving scary, it's giving, it's giving Halloween. But in <laughs> order to represent that, let's pull up a clock. A clock. What is the seven year curse you're saying? The seven year curse. All right, let me break down real quick. Like if I said to you, the seven year curse, what's the first thing that comes to mind? They got seven years and then Blackpink are the curse. Something's gonna the curse is hitting. Something's gonna happen to and them. And it's coming up to seven years? So, well, we've passed seven years. We've passed seven years. And so time's a ticket, but it's not like anything, you know, superstitious to say the mm. least. But if you want to look at just law generally, uh, the Korean Fair Trade Commission used to have um, contracts for K-pop idols that run for about 10 years, some even longer. But a new law made it firm that new contracts can only run for about seven years. Ooh. I personally like to see it as a little bit of a refresh button on the K-pop industry. Every seven years or so, we do get a new group every year or multiple groups every year. I think in 2020, there was 30 new groups that debuted. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that comes in and out of the industry. It's a constant running cycle and that's what keeps them moving. And that's mm -hmm. what keeps them fresh and light and always have something for people to look forward to. If you were Jenny, you audition at 14, right? And then you have been training for five, six years. You debuted at like tw 21, 22, and then you went on for another seven years. Yeah. Back to back concerts, back to back, mm, you know, events. Training. Like, how would you feel after seven years? I mean, I, I still feel like this is just the start. I feel like they can't stop now because this is where it's, they're really at their peak. I think they will survive the seven year curse. And there's a lot of times where groups actually have survived the seven year curse. BTS, Twice, 17, Mamamoo, and Red Velvet. Red Velvet. 
My Magic Mac. Sorry. They're one of my favorites. They survived the seven-year curse. So they... <laughs> but BTS, they're really... Yeah. I mean, yeah, they're falling off a little bit now because, you know, they start military training before or by the, by 30 years old. So everyone? But every everyone. man in Korea. Right. Okay. So, I mean, when you go in, like, when you're experiencing, like, two years away from all that life, all the fashion lives, and you're in military training and service, yeah, a lot. of course you're going to be, like, a whole different chapter. Different. You know what I mean? So that's usually why things kind of fall apart a little bit for K-pop groups. But also, um, people wanting to try out solo careers. There have been a couple solo songs that we've seen from Blackpink artists. Solo, Virginie. So solo. You <laughs> like, you like what I did there? Oh, my God. Cool um, solo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they are experimenting. They are doing their own things away from the group as well because, you know, each person will get also different contracts. You know, each person will also get different sponsorships and stuff because, yes, they are one group and one member, but each of them have their own little spaces in terms of how to build themselves up. I mean, we've seen them pass it, right? Like, just on the verge of passing it. Yeah. seems like things are still going up. I mean, the only headline for High Park, like, what, two months ago? Yeah, recently. Yeah, so they're doing... They are not stopping yet. I think they're releasing 2024 tour dates soon as well. So, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so I, I think this transition is actually well, if I can stop you there, onto our next point. We are down to the final item in our box. <laughs> the globe. Now, this globe represents what is next for Blackpink. So my personal opinion, Blackpink, what is going to happen next? Obviously, allegedly, they've got a mini album coming out later this year mm. and i think they're going to continue with their 2024 tours and I, I don't even know maybe 2025 2026 i think they're going to still be non-stop no matter what from an outside perspective especially in the uk i think we're going to be seeing them maybe in the charts more maybe if you follow it properly but for me personally i don't really see as much yeah and i feel like it really is going to start taking over like part of our culture as well but that's just from an outside perspective i still have the notion that we're just generally K-pop, regardless of music or K-drama, whatever it may be, you're either in it or you're not. You might have, you know, you know my experience, you might have your foot in terms of Parasite and then that was your, you know, one hit wonder. With K-pop especially, once you're in it, you're really, truly in it. It's like, I feel like it's like, if you know, you know. If you don't know, if you, know you, you don't know. The girls who get it, get it. And the girls that don't, don't. Exactly. Because you're not the girl. So, <laughs> that's Not okay. particularly, which is maybe why I haven't seen it as much, but hmm. I think this is the start of maybe people who haven't heard it as much now seeing it all the time. Now we're looking at K-dramas and stuff. I'm seeing a lot more as a person who's not, you know, fully indulged into it. I really hope y'all get in the comments and make Tom a blink. Oh my gosh, imagine you're Blackpink fan. Imagine you actually sing Korean songs. <laughs> Could you imagine? No, I'll do the dance instead. I'll be the choreographer. You don't want to see that? I'll do the dance instead. Okay, but I will say... Even 100 the, likes and I'll do the dance. That is bold. 100 likes and I'll bold, do the dance. That is a bold, bold request. They're hard dancers as well, to be fair. No, they are difficult. Yes, but I'm going to stop, stop you real quick. I want to agree in terms of the fact that Blackpink is going to keep going. Who knows? I mean, Western, Western artists, like, you know, they put out a bunch and then they disappear for two years. And then they, you know, soft launch themselves yeah. to come back in. But going away from not just Blackpink, we can also talk about upcoming Korean um, artists and bands and singers like Trends. Trend, yes. Trend? Uh, no, it's trends. 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 I don't know this one. I'm so sorry, trenders. Trends, I don't know who y'all are. We're seeing all these. It's not just Blackpink, which is on the rise here. Like, there are so many that are up and coming, and I just think it's it, they're just going to dominate. I mean, we'll wait and see how it plays out. But again, Korea has cracked the code of how to build. For sure. You know, and how to present their pop culture to the rest of the world. I'd be interested to know what the audience think. Let us know what you think about what is the future of Korean culture, Korean music. And I will also say, I mean, like, this is, is a really nice doorway for other international artists as well. For sure. Um, like, we're seeing a lot more Bad Bunny now. I mean, yes, Spanish. South American music, Spanish music, uh, a bit of reggaeton. We're seeing... Was it a fair few? The fact that that was the only example that we had. Yeah. I'm, so, I'm so sorry, y'all. But you know what? You know, you know what I mean, right? Like, it's... We're opening ourselves up a lot more to ease away from... Just the traditional Western music that we listen to. Mm -hmm. Another example, Despacito. That's <laughs> an example. Yeah, it is, but I don't have fun with like Despacito. No. I think it's it's a nice part of the Asian side of the world or just content from uh, you know, the Eastern side to marry with the Western world when the majority of this time has been a lot of the Western content coming over to mm -hmm. the Asian side of the world. So, but who knows, maybe New doors will be opening up because of South Korea for other countries, other yeah. international artists. Who are we going to see next? Who are we going to see next? Well, Hussein, our black pink box is empty. But well, what should we unpack next? Comment down below and like and subscribe.